Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing what I think might be the ultimate TP-Link Armada setup for a home or small business. I'm just gonna be using two devices, a Armada 3-in-1 router and an EAP610 wireless access point. This is a very simple setup. It doesn't take very long at all. And as I said, we've only got the two devices. So I'll just run through the devices and what they can do, and then we'll go on to the setup. Okay, so let me show you this now. Okay, so the first device we've got is the Amada 3-in-1 Gigabit VPN router. And basically that is a 3-in-1 device. And what that means is it's a uh, router, it's also an Amada controller, and it's also a PoE Plus switch. It has up to eight ports PoE. It has up to four WAN connections, so you can have lots of different internet connections coming into this. It's got two SFP ports, which can be used for either WAN or for LAN. And for those you can like, you can put in different types of modules so for example I've got here I've got an LC one so this is for a fiber optic cable or here I've got like a just a normal Ethernet cable one if you want to just add additional Ethernet connections to it so we've got the eight ports um, PoE we've get, then got the two SFP ports and we've got the WAN port as well on there so there's lots of ports we just have a look here you can see oh so if we just have a look here, you can see that the switch has got up to 110 watts of PoE, so it's quite a bit of power. Um, if you work out that the EAP has like, I think it uses 13.4 watts, um, then you can have up to seven access points on this switch directly powered by this device. Um, the Amada controller built into this isn't designed for a large scale network. It's allowed to have up to 10 wireless access points and two switches. So if you're planning something bigger than that, then uh, you need to consider something else. However, for like a home network, this is absolutely perfect. Um, it's uh, it's not a rack mountable device. It is designed to be sat on a desk, but you could put it on a shelf or something like that. It's a very small device. It doesn't have a fan either, so it's silent running. The other consideration with it is the size of the power pack, which I'm just showing you now. It's pretty considerable, and uh, it's something you're gonna have to think about, especially if you're gonna have that sat somewhere where the power pack's not gonna be easily hidden. It is, is a consideration. Um, my only sort of downside about this uh, device is that it doesn't have uh, any kind of wireless connectivity. So it doesn't have any Wi-Fi and it doesn't have any Bluetooth. So you do have to use a cable connection to set it up. So like on a desktop or a laptop, you can't use like the Amada app to set this device up. So uh, that's just a consideration. But for the price point, because this is a very reasonably priced device, it's really quite good. And you are getting all those through three in one devices. I've kind of worked it out and it is definitely cheaper to buy this device than to buy the three devices separately. Just one thing to say is that the switch on this, although it's able to pass VLANs, it's not uh, a managed switch as such. So you can't like give a, a VLAN on a cable connection, but you could connect a managed switch to it and then apply the VLANs on that. So. Right, that's the uh, Amada 3-in-1 router. You can see a little bit of information about that there. There's not an awful lot in the way of specs here, but it's a pretty nice little device. The other device I've got here is the EAP610. There's a few versions of this. The version one is a very big device. It's like the size of a kind of dinner plate. Um, we don't want that. This one is much smaller, um, as you can see here, and it's quite a nice looking device. Certainly much nicer than the previous generation of the Amada access points. It's Wi-Fi 6, 2x2 MIMO. Um, and it's uh, PoE plus powered, so it's 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 pretty nice. And um, we always get some really good uh, good performance off these devices, especially when you use some of the uh, Wi-Fi optimization, which I will show you during um, this video. Okay, so just to briefly explain what I'm doing here, I've got uh, two cables here. One, this oh, this black one, is going to my local area network. I'm going to be kind of cheating here, I'm using a uh, double NAT. Um, so basically I'm just gonna connect the router straight to my local network. The reason that I know that works is because this device uses um, a dot zero subnet as uh, by default, and I'm using a dot 200. So I know there's gonna be no conflict there, so I can just plug this straight into the WAN port, and that's gonna give me internet connectivity on this device. So I'll do that now. And then this other cable here, this is uh, going to my Mac. So I'm just gonna plug this in here and that allows me to connect to the interface. So I'll do that now as well. Okay, so I've opened a browser and I've put in the IP address 192.168.0.1 and it gives me a privacy message to start with. So I'm just gonna say show and then visit the website, visit the website. Okay, so now we get into the Amada setup wizard. So I'll just press on let's get started. 
Now the first thing you can do is create a administrator account. So uh, you can just put in your details here, whatever you want it to be. This is going to be the um, details you use to log into the controller. Um, so you need to make sure that you write these down or remember them. Okay, we're gonna allow remote binding. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to associate it to our TP-Link account. Now, if you haven't got a TP-Link account, then I would recommend creating one. You can do that down here with register now, or you can just put input your details. That basically means you're gonna be able to use the Amada Cloud um, services, and also you're gonna be able to see this device on your Amada app. Okay, so if we just put A now, Okay, so once we've put those credentials in and we've bound the account, we can just tick the uh, terms and conditions and press next. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna name our controller. So this is a little bit confusing because there's a controller, but there's also the site. So this is gonna be the name of the actual controller. So I'm just gonna call this YouTube, oh, YouTube controller. And I'm gonna change my country to United Kingdom and set the time zone to London. Okay, and then this basically says whether or not you wanna send your data to them so they can make improvements. I'm gonna tick yes, and then we'll go to next. Now this is the name of your site. So for example, this might be YouTube Home. Um, selects the country, United Kingdom. There we go. And then this is the device username and password. So this is for like your access points, etc. what you wanna set that device password to. And you can make that just the same as your controller login. That's not really an issue. And the scenario you can pick from any other scenarios down here. I'm just gonna select home and then we'll say next. Okay, so what this is doing here is it's finding the device that I've plugged in. So I've plugged in the EAP610 access point. I'm just gonna select next, uh, it's the tick box here, and I'm gonna select next. Okay, so the next part we're doing is we're doing the internet connection. So the first part is just uh, basically how often the internet connection is being tested to see if it's online. I can just uh, leave that as I want at the moment. This is particularly relevant, as you can see here, for load balancing, but we're not gonna be doing load balancing or link backups at the moment. Okay, so we scroll down. Now I'm not using SFP WAN LAN 1, so I'm going to go to WAN 3. I'm just gonna call this local network because I'm not actually using a proper internet connection here, I've just got it plugged into my local network. Now, if you uh, get to this bit, you're using IP version four, then you've got to select the type of internet connection you've got. So dynamic IP is the easiest type of internet connection. That basically means that your router will get an IP straight from your ISP, and that is really simple. If you've got a different type of connections, you can click on here. For example, if you've got a static IP, it means that you've got an IP address assigned to you, and you'll get that information from your internet service provider. If you've got PPPoE, which is quite common here in the UK, then you will probably need the credentials. For some services, like BT in the UK, it's generic, other services, it is customer specific. So you'll need the specific username and password. If you want some more information on PPPoE connections, then check out our video, I'll put the card in the corner. Okay, so we're just gonna leave that as dynamic. We're not using IP version six, so we could leave that off and we're just gonna use the default MAC address. We don't need to do any load balancing because at the moment we're only using one WAN connection, but this router can take up to four WAN connections. So you always do low, load balancing and failover if you want to. Right, let's go to next. Okay, so the next part we're gonna do is we're going to configure our Wi-Fi. So this is just gonna be the SSID. So I'm just gonna call this YouTube Wi-Fi. And I'm gonna give it a password of password one, two, three for now. The guest Wi-Fi you can put in here, we'll just call it guest Wi-Fi. There's not really any configuration on this other than the SSID name and it's currently sets it up as an open network, but we're gonna sort that out in a minute. So we'll just put that in and then we'll press next. Okay, now it's gonna confirm all the details you put in and we're gonna to go to the next stage where it's gonna ask you to log into the controller. So we'll click finish. Okay, so we log into the controller. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna give you some information on what the controller does. I don't need to see all this now, but you're more than welcome to go through it all. It's a good idea to get yourself familiar with how Amada works. So I'm just gonna click the cross up here in the corner. 
Okay, so basically when you first come into it, you're coming into the controller itself rather than the sites. So what you wanna do is go to your specific site. So you remember that we called ours YouTube Home. We're gonna go down here and we're gonna click on YouTube Home. Now that's gonna take us to our site. And what that basically means is this is the network we're setting up. I believe it's set up like this because you might be able to add more than one site to the controller, although I'm not sure I'd recommend it on this particular model. Okay, so now we're into the Amada controller. Now at the moment you can't really see much because not much has been happening. We're only just setting it up, but we're gonna do a few things. So first of all, we're just gonna check on our EAP610 that we plugged in. So we'll go down here to devices and we'll click on that. And hopefully we'll be able to see the devices here. Okay, so we've got our two devices. This is the three in one router. We can rename these by clicking on them. And then I'll just move myself. And then you can go to config and change the name in here. So I'm just gonna call this three in one router. And then you click apply. And that's changed the name. Okay, so now we're gonna click on the access point and we'll do exactly the same. This is particularly useful, obviously, if you've got lots and lots of access points. We can just change the name. I'm just gonna call this EAP610. Um, and then we can click apply. Okay, so both of those are need renamed. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and check on our network. So we created a Wi-Fi network in the initial setup. So we click on settings at the bottom here, and then we're gonna to go to wireless network. We're gonna click on wireless network, and then we're gonna click on wireless LAN. That's what that is there. And then you can see the ones that we've already set up. So there's our YouTube Wi-Fi that we did as part of the setup, and there's our guest Wi-Fi that we did part of the setup. So we'll just click on this one. I'll move this out of the way. Close those. So you go over to here to the side and we can edit that. So there you can see it's operating on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It also says it's operating on six, but we haven't got any six uh, gigahertz devices here. We can leave that checked. It doesn't really make any difference. We're not gonna have this as a guest network. The security is WPA personal, and that's our security key we put in earlier. We don't really need to do much more on this at the moment, but there are some other features. And I'm just gonna show you how to optimize your Wi-Fi using the Amada controller. So we'll just click cancel there because we've made no changes. Now, next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go to AI uh, wireless LAN optimization. And this basically improves your Wi-Fi. So if we click on this, and then what we wanna do is just go down here, I'm just gonna move myself again. Um, and we wanna set this up. So automatic channel optimization, basically what that means is it's gonna find the best channels for your access points. So we're gonna click on that, we're gonna get access to 2.4 and a 5. We're not using a 6, so we can leave that. We'll also get the automatic power optimization. We'll do that as well on 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. And we're going to put a schedule on this. Now, I want my schedule to be later than midnight. Midnight's a little bit early. People might still be using it. So we'll go to 3 o'clock in the morning. Not many people are going to be on the Wi-Fi at that time. We're going to make sure that the customized channel width is on 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. And then we're going to press save. Now, if you want to optimize your Wi-Fi straight away, you can click over here and press scan and optimize and it will do it immediately. As I'm setting this, setting this up off site, I would never do this. I would do this once I was on site and then I'd scan and optimize. Otherwise we're scanning an environment the access points aren't eventually going to be in. Okay, so now we've done the AI, uh, sorry, wireless LAN optimization. We're gonna do the next bit, which is gonna be our wired network. So we're gonna create a virtual network by clicking on LAN, and then we're gonna create a new LAN. And basically what this is, this is gonna be our guest network. So we're gonna type in guest network here. And we're gonna keep that as an interface. And then we can select which ports we want it to pass through. Um, this isn't a managed switch, so we're just gonna select all of them because we might plug an access point into any of these uh, LAN ports. So I'll select all my LAN ports. I'm gonna lose the SFP because at the moment we're not gonna use that. I'm gonna give it a VLAN ID of two, and then I'm gonna give it a subnet that is also two. So 192.168, and then we'll call it two, and one because this is the gateway, and then we're gonna put 24 here. That will give us 254 uh, IP addresses, and the IP addresses start from 2.1 to 2.254. So we'll update that, and then that will let update automatically down here. Okay, so we're gonna leave all that. The least time you might wanna shorten, 120 minutes is the amount of time that that IP address 
is assigned to a device when it joins on DHCP. If you want to uh, keep that shorter because you think you're going to have lots of guests and you don't want them hogging all your IP addresses, then you can make that shorter. Okay, so once we've done that, we're just going to press save. So that's our guest network created. And then what we can do is we can go into our wireless networks and we can select our guest Wi-Fi. Now we haven't really done anything to this yet, so we're going to go to the guest Wi-Fi. We can see it's on the 2.4, the 5 and the 6 as before. And it's enabled as a guest network, which basically means it's going to be isolated. However, that's only client isolation there, so we're going to do a little bit more. We haven't got any passwords on this at the moment, so we're going to put this in. So we're going to WPA personal, and then we're going to do a password. Again, I'm just going to do password 123 for the sake of this video. So we don't need to do any more in here. I think that's all for, oh yes, yeah, sorry, we need to do the VLAN. So we go to enable on the VLAN, and then we're going to put the two in there. And that's the VLAN that we did for our guest network. And then we're going to go down here and click apply. So now that guest Wi-Fi is set up and it's set up to VLAN 2. And that is basically using that network. So any device that joins that is going to get a dot to um, IP address. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to isolate that guest network. So we're going to go to network security. We're going to go to ACL and then we're going to say create new rule. We're going to call this guest to LAN block oh block we're going to make sure it's enabled we're going to say land to land we're going to deny protocols we're going to select all uh we're not going to do bi-directional and we're going to do network we'll keep that on network and then we're going to select guest network and then we'll keep that on network and then we'll select LAN. So basically what that's doing is stopping the uh, traffic from the guest network getting onto the LAN network. And then we'll press create. So now we've got a nice secure net guest network and we've got a Wi-Fi uh, network associated with that as well. Okay, so that's us pretty much set up. We, are, um, we now have our Wi-Fi set up we have our access point online and we have our guest network set up. Now there's lots more things that you can do with the Amada controller, but I'm not gonna go into that in too much detail. We are gonna do another video on how to use multiple WANs on the Amada controller, and I might even use this particular device to do that. It's pretty simple, but it's not for this video, so look out for that soon. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.